Hello, everybody. It's now Monday, the 15th of March, uh, 2021. It's the first Monday of Daylight Saving Time. And uh, this is a new episode of Civil War Chat. You can subscribe to this uh, podcast by clicking the surprise, surprise, uh, subscribe button below on YouTube. Uh, today's topic is about a statue for Massachusetts Governor John Andrew. So let me show you a picture of Andrew before uh, I, I get started here so you'll know what he looks like. All right. Share. There we go. And let me enlarge this. Okay. This is a statue of Massachusetts Governor John Andrew. He was the governor of Massachusetts during the Civil War. He was an abolitionist beforehand and uh, had quite a record of that. And he has kind of been made famous by this Hollywood movie, Glory, which is about the 54th Massachusetts Infantry Regiment, which was composed of black enlisted men and white officers. And it was one of the first to get into the uh, war between the states. But anyway, let me stop that sharing and go back now and pull up my notes here. A statue for Governor John Andrew, question mark. The Doric Hall inside the Massachusetts State House has only two full-length statues. One is of George Washington, and the other is of Civil War Governor John Andrew. Although Washington might get booted because he was, as we all know, he was a slaveholder, Andrew is apparently safe. He was a leading abolitionist who regularly criticized President Lincoln for being too slow to free the slaves. Prior to getting elected governor in 1860, he helped organize a legal defense fund for John Brown and his New England accomplices who tried to ignite a slave rebellion across the entire South in 1859 after seizing the federal arsenal at present day Harper's Ferry, West Virginia. Brown intended to massacre any Southern whites, regardless of sex, who resisted, resisted his rebellion. It really was a dud, it didn't go anywhere. But that was his intention and this, the investigation, the subsequent investigation showed that and the investigations also showed that a number of prominent New Englanders had consulted with him and perhaps even financed it. Anyway, against initial legislative opposition, Governor Andrew was a leading advocate for enlisting black soldiers into the Union Army. He successfully lobbied, lobbied President Lincoln for authority to organize the 54th Massachusetts Re Regiment in January 1863, the same regiment made famous by the Hollywood movie Glory. Since the Bay State had few Blacks, however, the regiment had to recruit free Blacks from New York, Ohio, Pennsylvania, and other states. Now, although Andrew was anti-slavery, he apparently only liked Blacks at a distance and even used that race as a tool to lighten the white man's burden in Massachusetts. One reason he authorized Black regiments in Massachusetts was to reduce the quota of white recruits and draftees the Bay State would otherwise need to send to war. In short, he made cannon fodder out of the blacks in order to save white lives, the lives of whites. Additionally, only three months before the 54th Infantry Regiment was formed, Andrew denied asylum, excuse me, asylum to black Southern refugees. In September, 1862, Union General Dix in Virginia asked the governor for permission to send 500 escaped slaves known as contraband to Massachusetts. Andrew replied, quote, for the former slaves to come here for encampment or asylum would be to come as paupers or sufferers into a strange land and climate, a trying event to its residents and to the refugees. 
to a busy community. They would come to a busy community where they would be incapable of self-help, a course certain to demoralize themselves and endanger others. <clears throat> in plain language, he was saying the blacks would not do well in Massachusetts and the state's residents didn't want them there. According to historian Gene Daddle, Andrew had optimistically expected that free blacks in the North would move South where their quote, peculiarities of physical constitution, close quote, were better suited. In February, 1864, however, the governor changed his mind. He wrote President Lincoln to complain that federal commanders in Virginia were preventing refugee blacks from migrating to Massachusetts where there was a labor shortage at the time. His real agenda was to reduce the burden of military recruitment quotas on the whites of his state. Since the scheme was transparent to Lincoln, the president responded to Andrew sarcastically, quote, if I were to judge from your letter without external knowledge, I would suppose that all the colored people of Washington were struggling to get to Massachusetts, which was anxious to receive them as permanent citizens and that the federal government here was interposing and preventing this. But I suppose these are not the facts. If it be true that Massachusetts wishes to afford permanent home within her borders for all or even a large number of colored persons who will come to her, I would not for a moment hinder them coming. Although he gained satisfaction from the moral preening that abolitionism gave him, like most Bay State residents, Governor Andrew did not want blacks in Massachusetts. Let them stay south. Blacks accounted for about 1% of the state's population when the war, the states, war between the states started in 1861. They still represented only about 1% 70 years later in 1930. So you tell me whether or not that statue should be remaining. You know, Black Lives Matter, academic uh, historians, mainstream media, given Andrew's reluctance to accept blacks into the Bay State, why should that statue stay remaining? given his hypocrisy. Now, for those of you that want to get a little bit different story on the Civil War, I recommend The Confederacy at Flood Tide by me, Philip Lee. It's the six months from June of 1862 to December of 1862 when I think the Confederacy had its best chance for winning independence. Uh, it's a little bit of a story that those with Southern ancestors might enjoy reading given all the other uh, demonization that is coming out of uh, the mainstream press, the mainstream book publishers, academia. I think, I think you may enjoy this. Now it's $28 at Barnes and Noble, $28 at Amazon and other bookstores. It's a hardcover book. If you'd like an autograph copy, just email me, Phil, P-H-I-L <clears throat> underscore Lee, L-E-I-G-H at me, M-E dot com. I will sell it to you for $31 autographed and I will cover postage here in the United States. Okay, uh, that's our show for today and thanks for watching.